My name is Chris Eyerly, and the build here is the Bernard Schwartz House, also called Still Bend. It's a Frank Lloyd Wright model from Two Rivers, Wisconsin. Um, and it's my third Wright model, actually, so I'm just really inspired overall by Frank Lloyd Wright's architecture. And uh, this is one that's uh, kind of rare in the fact that it's a bed and breakfast, so you can actually stay in it. And um, uh, I liked the color palette as well as the use of shadows, so using the dark brown and dark red and dark green to provide that, color, that darker color palette. Uh, was really kind of what inspired me for this build, and so that's why uh, I chose this as my third right model. And uh, you're from Kenosha, Wisconsin? Correct, correct. And, and there's a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright activity in the area. Talisa, how far is Talisa from uh, where you live? Uh, it's probably about two and a half hours, okay. um, uh, but we have like the SC Johnson campus, which is in Racine, about a half an hour away. That was completely designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. There's the Hardy House in, uh, in Racine as well. Um, there's lots of right in Wisconsin, and so uh, growing up in the Midwest, I've just always enjoyed Frank Lloyd. And then Chicago's like but a short drive away, and there's even more Frank Lloyd Wright. There is. There's the Roby House, which is uh, another build that I've done, um, and that's in Chicago as well, as well as there's a uh, Unity Temple and, and many others. So um, it's a great place. If you like architecture, you can't beat the Midwest. And uh, so describe the build to us. Uh, how did you begin? What was the process like? Uh, run us through uh, the stages. Sure. The first was deciding scale, of course, and I, I've kind of landed on the one stud to one foot or 138 scale. Uh, once I had that, it was getting the measurements down and then really working with the limited dark brown color palette. So what I had to do first was figure out how I was going to do the roof lines and, um, and some of the, the cedar lining, uh, you know, the cedar um, siding here as uh, dark brown. And so that was the biggest challenge was figuring out how to use the limited part palette. Well, definitely. Now, you mentioned uh, that you've done some previous uh, Frank Lloyd Wright builds before. Uh, what did you learn in the past that has allowed you to kind of execute this a little bit easier? Um, just uh, learning how to follow his lines, because lines were very important to Wright during his prayer in Usonian style. So knowing where his lines were, how lines changed height um, was, was probably the, the most significant. And then, um, you know, color is really important to, as well as in presenting a model of Wright, so choosing the right color. Those were the two biggest things I think I learned. Now, if you were to give a piece of advice to a person looking to, uh, you mentioned that one foot to one stud, is that the scale? Uh, so something like that, what, what would you say that is the most important thing to keep in mind to, to build something like this? Um, it, you have to pick the scale and it either has to be based on the overall size or a particular part. So when I did Roby House and the SC Johnson Tower, it was the windows on Roby House and the curved corners of the SC Johnson Tower that dictated the scale. So you have to pick some part of the building that dictates the scale. And after you have that, go from there. Very cool. Chris, wonderful build. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you very much.